What's going on today, YouTube? Today, I'm just going to be talking about some things I'm working on, which includes things like a local 11 labs, improving my Vivi project and updating it finally on GitHub and then my audiobook maker. So I'm going to be just going over some of all those things and some of my thoughts and things I've been working on to make all of the, those things smoother. And so I'm going to go ahead and minimize myself here. The first thing that I am working on is turning the RVC um, GitHub repository into something that is more installable, something that is easier to install. Currently, what we have to do is install it in editable mode, and I don't think that is a sustainable way or that I don't think that is um, the way to go for making a package that is easily installable. Um, so I am currently just working through it step by step, testing out the functions and trying to get all of the callable functions mapped out to where I can use them easier than having to install this package in editable mode. The biggest thing that I had to do, um, I had to, you know, change a lot of the imports. So I'm using the package name for the import so that it can find a lot of these local modules. Um, and so just working through this, this one isn't too hard. It's actually, um, at the current moment, it's pretty easy. The only issue is it just takes a lot of time as I had to step through the code. And so I currently do have the pre-processed train set. Um, I have that one figured out. So you can actually pre-process the data set uh, with the current installable RVC package. And that's only going to improve over time. So why is this important? Well, for um, one thing inside of the RVC package, if you try to install it in um, as like a package, if you try to do like pip install this directory, uh, you run into some difficulties trying to find the JSON files. And so I haven't found a way to actually package in the JSON file to the RVC package to where it's finding them. So I think what I can do is actually just store this data inside of, say, a, a Python module and then just call that module and grab those variables. I think that's kind of a kind of a weird way of doing it. There's probably a better way of going about it, but um, that is probably going to be my quick little bandage for that. So. Yeah, just working on making RVC more installable, which in turn will actually help me out quite a bit in these other packages. So um, the reason that I am trying to make it as quick as possible is because um, I mentioned in a community post, I'm going to be working on a local 11 labs version. And so um, I think the functionality that I need is somehow to be able to, you know, add a voice, make it to where you just upload some files. Once you upload those files, it still has to train through everything. So you need all of the local hardware to do it. So it's basically just going to be doing like a tortoise training session and then an RVC training session behind the scenes. I think that's what I'm going to kind of go for. Um, and then, you know, once all of that is done a couple hours later, you'll have your voice to use. And so, yeah, you would be able to select it. Um, you'd be able to mess around with some of the hyperparameters that are available in tortoise. And then you'd be able to enter in a body of text. So what got me thinking about this was the audiobook maker. And so if we actually open up the audiobook maker, the quality of the audiobook maker was, um, you know, what I personally had expected, but it's still quite surprising for the level of audio quality that you're able to get with uh, Tortoise 2 RVC. It is still, you know, having it having to pipeline it is probably not the most efficient way. So I'm, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for other open source projects out there. I have tried Valley X. Now, Valley X is actually decently good, but it's still not on the level of uh, prosody that Tortoise can match and mimic, especially once you fine tune the autoregressive model from Tortoise. It gets pretty dang good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run with Melina. And then we're going to go ahead and select one of those text files. And I'm going to turn down my index down to zero. So the reason that I'm choosing um, this one is it's, you know, a character that you might know. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, let's do test five. Start an audiobook generation and <clears throat> get it going. But while it's generating, 
Um, yeah, I would like to pipeline all of it into one so you can just upload files and then um, it would create a voice model equivalent toward a CTS one and then possibly a RVC one. But yeah, that might not actually be necessary um, because depending on the voice, of course, like if you have two similar speakers in the way that they talk, um, you could get away with just using a male tortoise bass and then using the specific character's voice model in RVC to convert the sound of it to the character's voice. And so here we are, it's finished generating. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, play some of these just to give you an example of the quality of the audiobook maker once again. And uh, here we go. This is really bad. Loss and penniless. Those few words were all he could think of. Well, penniless wasn't quite right. He did have his wallet in his pocket, and setting aside the fact that he had an abundance of small change and very few notes, it couldn't be denied that he had his assets on him, more than enough to go to the nearest mall to do some shopping and eat some lunch. Even so, he could only be called penniless. Looks like the currency around here is completely different after all. So there you go. That is, uh, you know, the audiobook maker with the uh, Melina voice. And if you've played Elden Ring, to me, that is actually pretty good um, in terms of the character's voice. And so, yeah, I think extrapolating the audiobook maker to something like a web GUI where you can just enter in text with a trained voice would be equivalent to, you know, like a local version of Eleven Labs. And so that is uh, the audiobook, Eleven Labs, etc. Um, I did also just want to talk and comment about Vivi. So I've been updating Vivi. If you don't know what Vivi is, Vivi is my voice assistant slash VTuber that I've been creating. Um, is one of my first projects that um, I started implementing for the AI stuff. And um, yeah, it's gone through a lot of work since my last YouTube video on it. And so I have started, um, you know, trying to organize it into a version that I want to actually push to main so that you guys could use it. And um, a lot of the cool features that I've added. So I've added a VTuber streaming model um, with some karaoke. Karaoke is on its, um, it's still a work in progress. So it's, it's not finished yet. Added some of the AI streamer stuff and worked on RVC integration. So um, I've got the TTS to RVC integration working inside of Vivi so that you could use um, a character's voice. You could do voice cloning in here as well. Uh, but you have to just import those PTH files from Tortoise or RVC. So it's not integrated into Vivi. I don't think I'll ever do that because, you know, you can train the voices elsewhere and then bring them in. Yeah, there are a lot of cool things that I think need to be uploaded with this repository. I think the last time that I actually pushed on um, Vivi on the main one on master would be <laughs> July 16th. And that was just for a requirements fix. So um, if you actually head on over to the tortoise branch of Vivi, that is where I've been doing all of my upgrades and updates. Um, I probably should have made it into a different branch, but regardless, I digress. Um, yeah, this is all pretty old. So yeah, I have not forgotten about this project, but uh, there are a couple of things uh, that I am working on and I only have so much time, unfortunately, uh, to get them all up and implemented. So yeah, those are some of the things that I am working on and they are getting done and will be updated and videos out for them and all of that cool stuff. But um, yeah, today was kind of just more of a talking video, nothing too crazy to show off or to explain. And I might do more of these, but it all depends. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you again in a future video.